At Guitar Nerds, we've covered a lot of Gibson guitars that you may have never seen on store shelves. But how about the guitars that you will have seen once and completely forgotten about the moment you left the shop? It turns out that entire ranges have been lost to the mists of time, and as such, it is our duty, no, our pleasure, to count them down. I'm Mark from Guitar Nerds, and these are the top five Gibson guitar ranges that you definitely don't remember. Number five, who do voodoo? Do you do voodoo? Gibson do voodoo? Who knew Gibson do voodoo? In 2002, Gibson tapped into their spiritual side and produced the Voodoo range, a Les Paul, SG, Flying V, and an Explorer that all shared a similar vibe. Each featured a swamp ash body with thick, open grains dyed with a moody, dark red finish. The included Black Magic humbuckers were actually just 496R and 500T pickups, with one red and one black bobbin, and the Voodoo look was capped off with this wacky skull on the fifth fret. The best bit about the whole Voodoo range? The rather awesome black and red snakeskin case included with all the models. Number 4 As with the Voodoo range, number 4 on our list also includes a Les Paul, SG, Explorer and Flying V. However, unlike the Voodoo range, the new Century models are some of the worst looking Gibson guitars ever made. Released in 2006, the New Century range took the four most famous Gibson body shapes, stripped them of any of the regular accoutrements, and slapped a big shiny mirror to the front of them. Am I making them sound horrible? Good, because they were. The worst offender was the Les Paul. Based on a Les Paul special, the flat top model had obviously been routed like a swimming pool, and the mirror plate didn't always fit quite correctly. Changing the height of the pickups often caused the plate around the adjustment screws to crack and left the guitar looking tatty pretty quickly after purchase. Now, Gibson are often the target of the internet's rage, and it's mostly unjustified, but the new Century models are one of the rare occasions where any criticism is spot on. Poorly designed, badly executed, and prone to cracking, the mirror scratch plate concept was dead on arrival and meant that the new Century range disappeared soon after it was announced. Number three. In the last few years we've become accustomed to the fact that some of the wood traditionally used to build guitars is running out, and as such is now tightly controlled. We've seen Brazilian rosewood completely disappear as an option on Fender Custom Shop models, and rosewood in general becoming phased out due to CITES regulations. And while some brands are struggling to adapt, Gibson have been experimenting with more sustainable options since the late 90s. Launching in 1996, the Smartwood range was a collaboration with the Rainforest Alliance and consisted of two models before the range was done in 2008. Each model was deemed responsible and Gibson was audited annually to make sure that only FSC certified wood was used in the construction of the series. The original model, the Smartwood Exotic, ran from 1996 to 2002 and deviated the most from the standard Les Paul template. With a thinner mahogany body than a regular studio, the Exotic's key selling point was the huge range of tops available. With Kurape, Paroba, Banara, Ambe Guasu, Tapurave Guasu and Chancharana all on offer, the Smartwood Exotic has got to be one of the most diverse guitars Gibson has ever made available. Replacing the exotic in 2002 was the Les Paul Studio Smartwood, a full depth Les Paul that still used Smartwood certified woods. This time round, only one choice of top was available in the form of Mura Catiara, sometimes known as Tigerwood. And while the neck and body remained mahogany, Preciosa was used for the fretboard material. One other key change was the truss rod cover, with the usual script changed to a metallic green leaf, the logo for the Smartwood project. Number two. Hot on the heels of the Voodoo range, the Gibson Menace series was released in 2006 and also featured Les Paul and SG models with a twist. Again, both models featured a thin lacquered finish and uncovered humbucking pickups, but this time round both featured weird chunks cut out of them in rather random positions. On the surface of the SG, the hacking and slashing was kept to a minimum, with only the scratch plate suffering from gouges taken out of it. However, if you flip the guitar over, you'll notice that a deep channel runs around the entire edge of the body. The Les Paul also wasn't safe from the trench running round the edge. In fact, Gibson doubled down on the concept and two deep grooves follow the lines of the Les Paul. And it's not just the sides of the guitar that fell foul of the chisel. The Les Paul Menace also had these claw marks on the face of the guitar, with four under the bridge and two by the selector switch. Both guitars also feature bizarre fifth fret inlays, with the SG having a knuckle duster and the Les Paul having a clenched fist. And while I think that most of the aesthetic choices made for the Menace series were truly horrible, I do actually really like the tattoo style logo on the headstock. A refreshing change from the norm on guitars that were otherwise failed experiments. Number 1. 
In the past two years, much praise has been heaped on Annie Clark and Ernie Ball Music Man for their focus on guitars designed with women players in mind. We placed the St. Vincent Signature model on our top guitars list in 2015 and have consistently praised it over on the Guitar Nerds podcast. However, did you know that Gibson actually produced an entire range of guitars that they claim were designed specifically for women nearly 10 years earlier? 2006 saw the launch of three new Gibson models, the SG Goddess, Les Paul Goddess and the Les Paul Vixen, each with unique features and in a range of colours previously unseen on Gibson guitars. Both the Les Paul and SG Goddess models featured slimline bodies, dual control knobs, uncovered humbuckers and wraparound tailpieces. Little dashes of flair like the bound fretboards and chrome controls were included to complement the black, red burst, blue burst, violet burst and ivory white finishes. Only available in the Les Paul body shape, the Vixen was much more of a slimmer take on the Les Paul Studio, with a matte finish, simple diamond inlays and less of the aesthetic flair of the Goddess. However, it still came in a range of super cool pastel colours including black, pink, yellow and blue. Now whether you think Gibson were ahead of the game when it came to redressing the gender balance in guitar design, or whether you think that the Vixen and Goddess models were just a cynical marketing ploy, you have to admit that they are some of the coolest guitars that have been placed far far back in the memory banks. So there you have it, five Gibson ranges that you've probably forgotten existed, but did we miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what you saw, remember to like the video and subscribe to Guitar Nerds for more videos coming really soon. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.